The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Hi there. Welcome to the Writer's Block Podcast. I'm Mandra. I'm Debbie. And I'm Shelly. Thank you for joining us here at the Writer's Block, where our mission is to inspire, empower, and to help people be well. On today's show, we're going to do a continuation of voice and talk about how does your voice matter. We're going to keep going on one of these, the most important concepts in writing, and then actually give you some writing exercises to do to help develop your own voice. So last week, um, we were talking about what voice is. And, and voice I- is, is really what makes you you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the the unique voice that comes through your writing. It conveys your personality, your attitude. But I mean, I think we all have great voices. (laughs) I do. I do. Speaking of us all having voices, last week after the show, we all left here feeling so excited. And the funny thing is our little text thread that went around, Mandra started it with, I can't wait till podcasting is my full time gig. (laughs) Shelly responded with... Oh my God, Deb, I'm laughing and chuckling to myself as I'm jamming out to Sweet Emotion by Aerosmith. And I wrote back, that's great. I listened to Rodney Crowell's It Ain't Over Yet and cried all the way home. (laughs) Three women leaving the exact same moment, all feeling really, really good. And look at the different responses. True. And each one very true to ourselves, our voices. Do either of the two of you go and take special cry showers? Because my wife does that. She (laughs) sometimes excuses herself from just random family functions and goes up into the shower to have herself a cry. Then she comes back feeling better. Usually my cries are pretty public. (laughs) (laughs) You're a public cry. I'm very public, yes. I only cry when I get extremely pissed off. Really? Yeah. Really? And then the pissed off just overwhelms. Well, thank God yeah. we've never seen you cry. Yeah. It scares yeah. people, actually. I have yeah. a staff member that just started like a week ago in, in one point in time. And I said to her, listen, we're going to have a meeting today. Don't be afraid. Wow. Everyone's getting fired and I'm going to cry a lot. <laughs> she was horrified. She'll never forget it to this day. Does she still work for you? She does. Okay. Yeah. She's survived. Hang on. You were crying out of anger? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it happens. I know. It's weird. Odd, isn't it? I like it. <laughs> the more I get to know you. <laughs> You're getting on the island. <laughs> You're slowly creeping in. I thought we were already on the island, but we were sunbathing. No, I was on the island. You weren't on the island yet. I'm sorry. You're still swimming. You're too busy crying in the ocean. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we uh, are going to keep talking about voice. Yes. And um, we also did, didn't we do a little experiment last time where we read two very famous authors um, excerpts from their books, and we had a choice of four people. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. We had Stephen King, James Patterson, Jody Peacock, and Irma Bombeck. I'd like to change my answer. You from can't. Last week. You can't. I'm sorry. I'd like to change my answer. <laughs> Guessing has been closed <laughs> <laughs> for five weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in this time warp. Well, in the interest of full disclosure, I think our audience should know that because uh, Deb is going to Bali for 20 days without me. Uh, You were invited. That wasn't a real invite. (laughs) Well, someone's got to watch the dog. Exactly. Uh, So we've done some pre-recording. So as of right now, there's only been one podcast released, but this is podcast number five that we're recording and it'll be post dated. It'll go up. And it has been a riot to watch the girls try to stay (laughs) true to their timeline. Like we just (laughs) recorded the last show just now and Mandra had to actually pretend like she couldn't remember what the authors were from 15 (laughs) minutes ago. (laughs) It was a great, I love it. A great bit of acting. I love it. (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Jonathan for setting everybody straight. I'm happy to help. (laughs) And and I just got fired. No, I don't know. No, you have to try harder to get a raise. (laughs) Yes, That's right. <laughs> well, I didn't make Shelly cry, so I know I'm safe. You're safe. <laughs> that would be scary seeing Shelly cry. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, should we say who wrote what? Well, I know I know the one I read was one of my all-time favorite authors, of, um, and someday my my new friend uh, Irma Jody, Bombeck. <laughs> no, Jody Pico. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. And then when uh, the one I read was James Patterson, who I love because I love his short bursts. 
yep. you know, creating a scene that is just so and impactful. And you could really right hear that. Bat. Right. That, do you have mm-hmm. that? Can you read the first couple lines? Yes. Right. Um, Leo Fisher holds a pair of boxer undershorts to the knife wound in his neck, trying to stop the flow of blood pumping out. The shorts don't seem to be doing much good. The fabric is soaked. Right. Like already. You can smell it, see it. Right. And if you're interested, that came from, that's the beginning of Home Sweet Murder. Oh, Home Sweet I think Murder. I have that one. I, I'm getting it. I'm getting it to read on the plane, my 29-hour flight. <laughs> oh, shut it. <laughs> God, I could read more than that. So that was James Patterson. Yes. And then you had Jody. And her, Yes, Jody Pico. And it was. Uh, it started with things break all the time, glass and dishes and fingernails, cars and contracts and potato chips. And that is from the, her novel, Handle with Care. Right. So those are two great advice, uh, examples. examples of a strong, strong voice in writing. Right. Okay. Um, so next we're going to talk about an exercise that, Deb, you actually assigned to us in our writing group. Um, and we're going to ask the audience to do the same. And what Deb did was she gave us one sentence, Jane swam in the ocean, and we all had to write a few lines and then hopefully be able to figure out who wrote what. And we're all going to read not our own. So the one I'm reading is not mine, et cetera. So that narrows it down. Can I guess who wrote what? You can. All right. And am I to believe that Deb is really not reading hers? Or yes, is there some not, sort of trickery? There is no trickery. There's no trickery. You're also no new to trickery. podcasting. So. Oh, we should have a trickery. Okay, eventually we'll have trickery. <laughs> we'll turn tricks. Uh, <laughs> All right. So That's an awkward turn of phrase, and I'll thank you yeah. to never use it again. <laughs> so our, our producer extraordinaire, Jonathan, over there mm-hmm. is going to see if he can figure out who wrote which Excerpt. Jane swam in the ocean excerpt. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Shelly, you want to start with whoever you have? I have got it. Mandra. (laughs) (laughs) Because there was a pause? Because there was was a solid pause. I was playing the band. Jane swam in the ocean each morning early as the sun came up. A slice of time just for her. Before the demands of the day woke with all the constant calls for attention. The ocean, these few precious moments between twilight and sunrise were all hers. She dove into the chilly waters, dreaming of a day when the only push and pull she felt was of the tide. All right. Ooh, so I want to keep reading. Right? That was one of us. Deb. All right. Deb, read who you have. Jane already felt energized with her hands wrapped around a warm cup of coffee. Her early morning sunrise walk to the shore was the best way to start her day off on the right foot. As her glitter-painted toenails reached where the sand meets the water, she chugged the last sip of coffee, raised her arms to the sky filled with shades of orange, and took a deep cleansing breath. She shimmered off her sweats, pulled the hoodie over her morning hair, and slowly and gracefully walked into the water. Okay. Jonathan, that was number two. Thank you. I got that. Pretty good at counting. Good. Actually, I'm not. I'm glad you're keeping me on point. (laughs) All right. Here I go. Jane swam in the ocean. She hoped the cold water would make her numb, but instead it made every nerve in her body scream that she was too cold, too heavy, too tired. She felt too much. A lifetime of feeling too much. She kept reaching toward the horizon, a target, a goal, a point of no return. She was going to keep swimming until she couldn't lift another arm. This swim was one was a one-way ticket, an end to the pain of feeling too much. Right. <coughs> okay, so we have one, two, and three. They were all three very good. And very different. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, which is the point yes. of voice. Yes. We took the same sentence <clears throat> and three very different um, outcomes. Right. I'm going to say this. You all three belong on this podcast. Um, you all three can hang. We can hang. All right. Awesome. awesome. That's great conversation. Awesome. In order of the, the, the order that they were read, it was Mandra, Shelley, Deb. Those <laughs> wow. are my guesses. Wow. Very good. Wow. And just, just so that the audience can get a sense, how did you, like, what, 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 Hey, of well, first one. of all, just so the audience knows, there was no trickery. There was, there was trickery. no trickery. Did not prep Mr. Jonathan no, over there. Absolutely there was not. not. Um, the big tell <clears throat> was the details on the toenails. Only yep. somebody who works <laughs> in that industry would have put glitter on the toenails. Everyone else would have overlooked that detail, and that kind of uh, cemented my initial guess of Mandra being the first one that was read. No, I, I read oh. the toes, so I was second. I understand then, who oh. read it, but hers was the first piece that was read. 
Yes. Uh, that I guessed before it was read because of the pause. I, and oh, I was correct. trying to he stick did. with that guess. He did. Yes. Okay. And did. then when I heard the toenails, I had to. Sorry. Again, I'm, I'm not really great at the whole voice thing, but I can play the man pretty good. <laughs> so man to man defense. How did you know mine? <clears throat> Uh, process of elimination, Deb. Do I have to say it out loud? Yeah, you have to say I it out loud. loud. I want to know. Oh, yours was yours was the right amount of darkness. <laughs> you have you have this sick, twisted <laughs> viewpoint that comes through in your writing always. <laughs> okay, all right, that'll work. But that's a good thing. Yes, it's a good thing because that he it comes through. Right. right, right. Listen, I'm a great judge of whether or not uh, something is going to be a successful woman's book. If I don't like it. It's going to be great for the ladies. That's perfect. <laughs> You're going to like sell Howard. a million, baby. Yeah, he sounds like Howard. That's the scale sounds we're like working Howard. with. Yep. <laughs> so what we want you to do is take that sentence, Jane swam in the ocean, and what? send it to our Facebook page? Yes, the Writers Group Podcast NH. Make sure you put that apostrophe in there. Writers Block. Writers the Writers Block. block. Writers oh Block. God. Writers NH block. Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And submit your writing. I would love to uh, take a read and and hear what your voice sounds like from that one sentence. Now, not everybody is going to want their full name read. So if you have specific instructions, you want to remain anonymous Mm -hmm. or you'd like it just to be your first name, please include that before your excerpt. And that way we treat the the writer appropriately that is responding. Good call, Jonathan. That sounds great. Literally the only reason I'm here. (laughs) <laughs> I'm excited. I wonder what we're going to get. I know. That'll be really fun. And then I think we have another exercise to work on voice as well. Um, Deb, you want to talk about that one a little bit? Yes. Uh, Jessica Abel is a cartoonist, podcaster, and teacher, and she advises students to pay attention to what you pay attention to. Uh, Spanish philosopher Jose Gasset said, tell me what you pay attention to, and I will tell you who you, tell you, who you are. And I thought a perfect example of this is uh, Jonathan and I went out for breakfast. And when we walk into the restaurant, he wants to sit with his back against the wall so he can see everything that's happening. It's a man's thing. Yes. And when I walk into that restaurant with him, I see a woman with long red hair. And I'm off thinking about the next polymer clay mermaid I will make. And that I should get animal fabric print and beads to make our tail. And our saying will be, take a dive on the wild side. <laughs> and then right after that, I'm going, yeah, hold yeah on, the hold waitress wants hold to know on, you want. Hold on, you want coffee. <laughs> Suddenly... Jonathan grabs my arm and starts pulling me towards the door. I can tell he's annoyed with me. What did I do? But who cares? Because I'm annoyed with him because the napkin's still on the table. Didn't you notice the kitchen is on fire? He growls. Well, no, I didn't. But don't save me. I can save myself. Save the mermaid. (laughs) (laughs) So there are Jonathan and I, two people having breakfast together. And yet the things we're noticing tell so much about who we are. And so when you're writing a character, that's what you want to think about. You don't want to say, you know, she went to breakfast with her, you know, husband and wife sat to breakfast. You know, they ordered eggs. They didn't talk. Then they left. Not a very interesting right. story. Right. So if you, you want to take in the surroundings. You want to get to know your characters so that you, when they go to breakfast, what do they see? You know, what do they pay attention to? And when you do that in such a short amount of time, you get that character development that is often missing in, in everything that we're exposed to when you talk about Netflix, TV, movies, movies and TV shows are getting shorter while the uh, ad content's getting larger and we're getting less and less character development. Right. And you were able to develop two characters in just a few sentences. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they're not really characters, but... <laughs> and because we're writers, we have to do it without that visual right. platform of a Netflix or whatever. So it's even more important mm-hmm. with your voice and the words you choose you know, to be able to develop those in just a few sentences without any sort of visual mm-hmm. to describe that scene and really pull that reader in. Right. Because writing is going to be, you have to express the sensory and emotional of each moment without the intonation and the body language. Mm-hmm. You can't whisper, you can't cry, you can't even move your hands to stress your point, and you can't even right. make eye contact. So you have only the words to communicate your message. So those words matter. They do. Your voice and the and the word choice all sort of play into kind of creating that that movie for the for the reader. Right. Can we start our own hashtag on Insta? <clears throat> all words matter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a rally? Should we have a rally? We should have a rally. Should, all all words Can it be on matter. the beach? <laughs> sure. I'm not because sure. Because it's Deb, it would be on the beach. It would be. <laughs> I could start it in and Bali. A <laughs> oh yes. Deb, are you gonna Skype us? 
I will try, but I, I don't. I, I'm not really sure how well my phone will work. Okay. But I will try. All right. That and she has a thing about not keeping it charged. Well, the fact that the interwebs and the satellites and all those things are all over the place. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I was checking yesterday on uh, what uh, vaccines are recommended. Not oh. required, but recommended. So to go to Bali? Yeah. Really? Oh, all oh, of them. Yeah. A lot. There are quite a few. Really? Japanese encephalitis, hepatitis A, oh. a bunch of others, but all recommended. She said, you know, which one do you want? I said, none. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. None? Um, all right. So I think that that's sort of where we're at with voice. We want to hear, um, hear from our listeners so if they want to send their Jane Swam in the Ocean to our Facebook page, Shelly, you want to give it another go, what that is? The Writer's Block Podcast <laughs> and H. Nailed My it! My goodness, right? <laughs> and tell your friends, of course, too, as well. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're going to head on to our project updates okay. and spend a little time there. Deb, you want to start us off? I'd love to start because I have kind of an exciting one that you girls don't know Deb about. Deb is beaming. She's like about I to know, I can't just hear what this is all about. out of her chair here. Well, as you know, part of the writing process is research. So my update this week is very secretive. It's the I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you kind of update. Oh. On Friday, I'm meeting with a former DEA agent. And my code word is the title of the book I'm researching, Tango Bravo Dance. And that's all I can tell you. Really? Are you serious? Yes, I am. I am. Uh, yep. You're meeting with the DEA? Jonathan? Yes. I had no I idea thought she about couldn't this. talk about this. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know. It just happened. I've been trying to make it happen for a while. Really? I have a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend. Oh, love those kind of friends. Yes. I can't wait for her to email me while she's in Bali saying, you need to edit this podcast and take that whole section out because <laughs> I really wasn't supposed to talk about it. <laughs> Well, I didn't say his name. And my plane was diverted. I'm not going to Bali yes. now. I'm ending up in <laughs> Guantanamo Bay. Oh, it's so exciting. I'll write about it. I'll have my laptop. Oh, my. So you're, that's like, that's writer's research. Absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah. I, I need a little, I, I want to make the world real. And that's not really a world I know about a lot. Right. And so, yeah. And it's so interesting because sort of in my other life, I uh, direct a dance studio and I had a, a writer reach out to me to interview me about running a dance studio and staffing and all that kind of stuff to do her writer's research for a book that she's working on um, that involves relationships and a family and whatnot and the the main character is a dancer. So, yeah, you're doing it's good an interesting homework world. there. Yeah. A twisted yeah. web. Yeah. <laughs> Shell. Well, let's see. It is a small world, and in my my regular life, I stand behind the chair as a hairdresser, and uh, that is how I made the connection with this developmental editor, um, Don Langley, um, Don Reno Langley, and she goes by. And I just recently listened to her uh, TED talks because I was always concerned whether she had enough sarcasm, and she's got a little sarcasm. Nice. I like it. it. It made me feel a little more comfortable. So, and I don't think you need to worry. Even if she doesn't have any, you have plenty. Well, like you read something where a new writer could, uh, you know, flatten things out to get the story. Right. And that's what I'm afraid of. You You can't flatten me. Because I'm not flat. You can't flatten flatten me. No. You can't snuff me out. No. No. Shelly Sparkle. There's a a whole philosophy in the stand-up comedian's world where if you can play clean, you can obviously play dirty. And I feel like it's the same way with sarcasm. You either have it or you don't. You can always turn it up or turn it down. But if you, you need to have it in order to really be, or your development, developmental editor needs to have it in order really to be a good fit with you. And if, mm-hmm. if she has a little, right. she right. could turn it up or turn it down. Mm-hmm. True. That is very true. And it's all a small world in how you meet these people. And I was literally doing a client's hair who was a neighbor of the salon and said, I'm looking for that person to sew this story together. And she said, oh, you should look at my friend on Facebook. I went to high school with her. I haven't talked to her in years, but maybe she's the connection. And, uh, you know, it turns out that she is the connection. So That's great. we're getting there. Slow baby steps. Yes, it is. The process <laughs> is painfully slow sometimes, mm-hmm. but you're all moving along. Well, and I do know, I understand what Deb means when, um, you know, she gets, there's an email like on my phone right now that I'm like, <sighs> going to plan some time to open to see what the assignment is. Is it from Don? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Nice. Well, I can't wait to hear about that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of doing the same thing um, with just another love story. I need to get 
my rough draft manuscript to um, one of the either nursing staff or medical staff um, to kind of make sure that all my facts, my medical facts are straight. I, I knew a lot of it, but I want to just make sure that I have the right acronyms, explain things correctly, and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm going to be reaching out to one of Brad's nurses, who was his nurse for a very long time, um, and who I know well, and we have continued, <clears throat> excuse me, continued a relationship with afterwards, and maybe she'll read it from that standpoint. So I make sure that all the, the medical info is accurate. Oh, smart. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, we're, we're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I know we were good writers, but I forgot we're smart, too. Smart too. Yeah, we try. Yeah. Yeah. Make the, make the effort. Um, <clears throat> so I think now it's time to take a walk around the neighborhood and see what we got going on. So why don't we rock it on over to Inspiration Alley? Oh, well, hello again. So I am going to give a shout out to uh, my developmental editor, uh, Don Riedel Langley. You can look her up on Facebook. She does amazing. She has website on top of website. She does everything from ghostwriting, developmental editing to regular line editing. Um, she's written several books. Her um, The Morning Parade is about, um, she has this, uh, this love for for the animals and saving them. So a lot of her books are kind of got a base around that where she took, took a trip to Thailand and she learned a lot about the elephants and this whole morning parade is a very deep story about saving the elephants. And, uh, it's what she does for her little part in society. So I, you know, kind of giving back, check yeah. her out, yeah. giving back. That's how she yeah. gives back. So Don Reno Langley and you can uh, check her out on Facebook. Wow. Great. Thank you, Shelly. Let's sashay over to Life Pondering Square, Deb. All right. Well, as a writer, I love words. I love them so much I want to wear them on my body, so I make bracelets to remind myself to live a life of intent, which Shelly happens to sell at her salon. Uh, today I'm wearing a burgundy leather cuff with a brass metal piece that I hand-stamped the words with all my heart. Four simple words with all my heart. As I go through my day, I glance at the bracelet. When I'm distracted, I take a deep breath and I do Mandra's breathing exercise from a few weeks ago. <laughs> and I rub the message because it's really a simple reminder to live my life with all my heart. And if you it's are beautiful. anything like me... Let me see that one again. Okay. So, Deb, I know we didn't plan this, but did you notice the oh. earrings I had on today? Oh, no, I didn't. What did you have on there, Shelly? I have the earrings. Well, I had to modify a little bit. Um, I had to give them extra... <laughs> <laughs> but Deb had um, given me these. They came in the mail and a nice little card that says, I can and I will. Aww. I love that. They're silver. Oh, silver uh, oh. rectangle stamped. Oh. Yeah, those are beautiful. Very nice. Thank you, Shelly. I didn't, I, you know, I was so distracted by your beautiful hair that I didn't see the earrings, oh, but you. I'll look closer <laughs> next time. <laughs> Deb, that's, that's a great and bracelet. Thank you. Because I have one of yours. Yes, I don't have that too. one, but I do have I do have one of yours. You can check them out on my website, DebraMonk.com, if anyone else would like to wear their heart on their sleeve. Ooh, I like it. And they're, they're great gifts, too. I think I... I, I think you gave one to your sister. I did. Yeah. I, who I, I haven't did. met yet, and I can't wait to meet her. I think the I Am Enough one. Oh, probably. I think that's that, the one right. I got for her for uh, one of their Christmas presents. Right. Yeah. It's beautiful. So now let's check out the Mandra Be Well corner. All right. So last time I was talking about clean eating and what that is. And there's sort of a two um, pretty popular clean eating, I'm going to say diets, but really more like lifestyles out there right now. One is paleo, which is the caveman diet. So it's eating things that would have been around in the paleo era. Um, so again, your whole fruits, your whole vegetables, meats, fish, um, leaving out sort of the processed junk. And then there's also uh, the Whole30, which is 30 days of very strict, clean eating. Um, I would highly recommend, if you're interested in that, that you read the book, It Starts With Food, by Melissa Hartwig. She and her team came up with the Whole30 program. They've done a lot of research. There's a lot of science behind it. Um, it's a funny book. Talk about sarcasm. Melissa is a riot. And so it's fun to read, but it also explains why you're doing what you're doing if you do decide to do the Whole30 program. And I would definitely recommend reading it first because it will answer a lot of your questions and there'll be a lot less whining if you just read the <laughs> darn book before actually doing it. Because if you just try to do the Whole30, you're going to be like, why can't I eat this? Why can't I eat that? And what it does is it has you um, 
take out gluten, soy, dairy from your diet. And so you're only eating fruits, vegetables, meat, poultry, eggs you can have. And then you know, you're really very rigid about saying <laughs> That means no cheese, right? At no all? cheese. Oh, no cheese. I don't think I can do it. But listen, what you, you you can do it. You can do anything for 30 days. You can do this. Okay. And it involves some cooking, some prep. You got to be prepared. But then what you do is you slowly introduce those things back in. So you'll introduce the gluten back in, the soy back in, the dairy back in, and you'll see how each of those things affect your body. And I can tell you just my own experience. I had no idea I had a sensitivity to dairy, but when I put the dairy back in, my back started hurting again. My shoulders started hurting again. I had a little like eczema on my hand came back and I had all this inflammation in my body that was due to the dairy. It's hard so to believe it. Hmm. Yes. But beyond that, you will have so much energy. You will be able to do your day, work your hours, play with your kids, and just have so much energy. You'll feel great. You'll sleep great. Hair, skin, nails, all that um, gets totally transformed by just 30 days of, of eating this way. I've never done the uh, the 30 day <clears throat> one, but I did the I did the Paleo 30 day challenge, mm -hmm. and what a reset push that is on your body brings you back to when you were 18. Yeah. Nothing hurts. Yep. Your mind is clear. You do have the energy. It really is exceptional. It is. Well, and you know, I am so inspired that I think I'm going to write, I've, I now know what I'm going to write next. I'm going to write the go gluten, go sugar, go dairy diet <laughs> <laughs> by Deborah Monk. We're all going to feel like for everybody. <laughs> Oh, God. No, but it is. It's, oh. it's an amazing reset. And I think the, the paleo gives you a little more flexibility. So what I do is a couple whole 30s a year and then paleo in between where you can be eating clean 80% of the time and then indulging 20% of the time. So you can have your glass of wine or your cream and sugar in your coffee or your cupcakes or whatever. Or cheese and crackers. Uh, or cheese and crackers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So... Again, moving forward, we're just going to talk about some great recipes and some tips to help you stay on track if you do want to try out one of these ways of eating. I will be honest. I will get that book and read it on my flight. I promise. Definitely read I it. I didn't say I'd do. I didn't say I'll do the book. I said I'll read the just book. Just read it. I'm just being <laughs> just clear. Just get started. <laughs> but if you do it and you don't read the book, you have so many questions and you just complain a lot. So right. I, I highly recommend reading the book first. Um and that's great. I think that's all we have for today. So thank you so much for listening in. Definitely check us out next week. And may you be inspired, feel empowered, and be well. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.